Yes, that's right. I'm going to be attempting to beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 without using the mask. Out of the 11 characters this game has, none of them require the mask to get rid of them. And I won't be using it. So is this challenge even possible? Well, in this video, that's what I'm going to find out. I mean, how hard could this actually be? Bro. Yeah, this isn't going to be easy. So let's begin with night one. So night one is once again just the tutorial night. So while I wait for someone to actually do something, let's go over this game and how it works. Fire Into Freddy's 2 has the same premise and goal as Fire Into Freddy's 1. You're a security guard working 12am to 6am and you need to survive 5 nights while animatronics come to kill you. However, there are two things that are different. One, as I said before, we have no door to defend ourselves, but we also don't have to worry about power. And two, we have a lot more than just four characters. So how do we stop the animatronics? Well, with the mask. Oh yeah, we're not using it. However, on this night, the main threat to us is the puppet, who chills on cam 11 and requires us to wind their music box to prevent them from killing us, since they aren't fooled by the mask, but we can't wear it, so whatever. So how do we stop the rest of the characters from getting to the office and killing us? Well, like in Final Fantasy 1, they work on movement opportunities. I'm sure everyone and their mother knows how the system works, but basically the characters have a 1 in 20 chance to move every 5 seconds based on their AI level. The higher the number, the more likely they are to move. But because all the characters have a really small AI level, they don't really move that much. However, on Night 1, I learnt a few problems I was going to have with this challenge. Unlike Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, where the animatronics have a chance to move backwards, in Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, the animatronics cannot move backwards, meaning that once a character moves to a new camera, they will never move back to the previous camera. Similar to how Freddy works in Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, except it's every single character. Now this might mean that we are entirely screwed, and <laughs> you'd be right. However, there is one feature of this game that gives us a fighting chance. Flashlight stalling, or the main mechanic used in minus 7 strats. Basically, whenever you use the flashlight on a camera, any character in that camera is frozen for 6.66 seconds and cannot move. Meaning if timed right, you can prevent every single character from ever being able to move. However, on night 1, I was not very good at this and nearly ended up dying. But luckily for me, the music box takes a whole minute to run out this night, so the puppet didn't reach us and we got the dub. <laughs> night 2 is where everything goes terribly wrong, and when I say terribly wrong, I mean it. There's one major problem in this night, and it's this little sh**. <laughs> Balloon Boy is the single biggest problem with this entire challenge. Without Balloon Boy, this challenge would not only be possible, but super easy to pull off. However, Balloon Boy just takes my hopes and dreams and crushes them. But what makes Balloon Boy so difficult, you say? Well, remember how I said you can stall the characters from moving if you flash them? Well, Balloon Boy is the only character who does not care about being flashed and just straight up ignores it. This means that the entire challenge is up to Balloon Boy RNG. It's the doors again. It takes 5 moves for Balloon Boy to make it to your left vent, and with an air level of 3, on average, Balloon Boy is going to have about a 15% chance to move every 5 seconds. And considering that Balloon Boy has about 68 movement opportunities from 1am, the theoretical math of BB not ever showing up to your vent is 0.00158667123% on night 2. That's a lot of numbers. By the way, shout out to the Bones 5 for these numbers that I'll be using throughout the entire video. I would have no idea what these numbers are without him, so go blow them up in the description. Now for those who don't know, if Balloon Boy makes it to our office and we don't scare him off with the mask, which we can't do because we're doing a maskless challenge, then he enters our office and disables our lights, which causes two main problems. The smaller problem is that we can no longer store animatronics from entering the office, which means we have limited camera time. But the bigger problem, and the reason I normally died, is because of Withered Foxy, who requires you to flash him with the flashlight to prevent him from killing you. Balloon Boy disabling your flashlight means that there's no chance of ever fending off Foxy, which basically guarantees that you are going to die. Now even if Balloon Boy does show up, we still run the risk of losing all our flashlight battery if we aren't careful. On later nights, I got quite good at saving battery, but I wasn't that good at the start. But you must be wondering, with that stupidly low chance of Balloon Boy never showing up, how on earth was I able to beat this night? Well, these numbers are just the chance of Balloon Boy never showing up. But the thing is, even if Balloon Boy does show, you can survive. Granted, you need him to show up later in the night rather than earlier. 
If Palimpo shows up and you manage to stall everyone and keep the music box completely wound up, the music box will take 50 seconds to wind down. Then, winding it fully after Balloon Boy enters gives you another 50 seconds before the puppet can kill you, granted that you have disabled Foxy. If Balloon Boy shows up at 5am or even 4am on this night, you can actually stall for the rest of the night. Also, you can prevent Balloon Boy from entering the vent opening by holding the light button, but it's not super effective, I'll explain why later. This night alone took like 15 attempts, but I did still manage to pull through this night, but it's only going to get harder as we go on. Night 3 was just bad. Now Balloon Boy actually gives us a tiny break, having an AI level of 2 rather than 3 and having a 0.021% chance of never showing up. Which is still low and you know guaranteed he's going to show up, but actually manageable since he won't show up till like 4am usually. But at the same time, the music box unwinds after 33.3 seconds now, so you got to be careful. But the new challenge is now that we have 3 more animatronics to deal with, the 3 Withered. Withered Bonnie, Withered Chica, and Withered Freddy. This may not seem so bad, but my god did it make the battery on my flashlight drain. So I needed to conserve my battery by only tapping the control button rather than holding it. This is why I really learned how to use the minus 7 strat. Although if I'm completely honest, this night wasn't actually that much harder and I don't really have much to add besides figuring out the best cameras to stall everyone on. Obviously the minus 7 strat is probably the best, but I didn't actually know what cameras to use, so I just kind of winged it. I just found that using the parts and service cam, the main hall and the show stage were the best three spots because that pretty much got every single character. If you needed to, you gradually move with the characters that slip through this strategy. But if I'm being completely honest, this night wasn't that bad and there's not much to talk about besides Withered Freddy and Toy Freddy are the two characters you never want to be unstalled because you can't stall them in the main hall. But otherwise, I did get this after about 10 tries. Although only barely, I mean, just watch what happened. <gasps> oh my god, no f way. <laughs> okay, night four was absolute pain. Like literally the most painful night ever. While you don't have to worry about the toys as much on this night, you do have to worry about Mangle, who was just insane on this night. Stalling them in the main hall is essential, as they move so fast that if you don't keep them locked down, it's pretty much over. However, this night is where Balloon Boy became a massive fucking pain. On average, Balloon Boy showed up at the vent at about 2am, and while you can use the vent light to prevent him from entering, all you're really doing is delaying the inevitable. Eventually, if you're not paying attention, he will enter. Balloon Boy's AI is 3 for the whole night rather than 3 from just 1am on night 2. According to The Bones 5, the chance that Balloon Boy never shows up on this night is 0.000023%, which is just completely absurd and probably why he thinks this challenge is impossible. So, with all this knowledge, did I actually beat night 4? Well... Hello. Fuck, no, thank you. Ooh, Shadow Oh my god, how did I beat Night 4? You've got to be kidding. How did I get so lucky? Yeah, no, so I didn't. Unfortunately, despite over 15 hours of attempts, the furthest I got was 5am or about 6 minutes and 33 seconds, which is 27 seconds off from a win. In order to beat this night, I had to use the mask one time to get Balloon Boy to leave me alone for the rest of the night. And he still showed up again. So, unfortunately, it is not possible to beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 without the mask. Now, I do think that Night 4 is possible, however, it would require a ridiculous amount of luck. So, since I couldn't beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 without the mask, I wanted to see how many times I had to put on the mask to beat this game. 
basically putting on the mask as little as possible. So night four, obviously, as I established, requires at least one use, but theoretically it would be possible without the mask, but it would require a stupid amount of attempts, probably a hundred hours minimum. And since I want to upload in the next year, I'm going to, you know, not actually attempt it. So obviously that's a massive L, but let's see how night five treats us. So night five is 100% impossible without the mask. This number is the chance of Balloon Boy not showing up. I don't even understand what this number means. So not surprisingly, Balloon Boy has a 25% chance to move every 5 seconds, meaning he's almost guaranteed to move every 20 seconds. And since there are 420 seconds in a night and he only needs 5 successful movements to get to us, this means that on average, Balloon Boy will show up 4 times in a night. So hypothetically, if Balloon Boy gives us the average, which is never the case, you will need to put on the mask 5 times in total to beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2. Possibly 4 if you can beat Night 4 Maskless. Night 5 was going to take tons of attempts as every character has a stupidly high AI and you pretty much have to use the minus 7 strat in order to beat this night with 4 mandatory mask uses. Which is still really hard, so yeah, that's pretty much it. While this was an absolute shame that this challenge was impossible, I feel Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 earned some of my respect with this challenge. It's probably one of the only Final Fantasy Freddy's games that requires you to use all of its main mechanics to beat the game. You can't beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 without the camera. You can't beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 without the lights. And you can't beat Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 without the mask. It's truly a beast of a game. And I honestly like it a whole lot more now. But anyways, there we go. A huge shout out to the Bones 5 for showing me the math. And thanks to these guys for staying in Discord calls and being why I grinded out attempts. I would love to try more challenge runs in the future, and I wouldn't mind even streaming them either. If you have any challenge ideas, leave them in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Remember that I will be thanking all my subscribers at 10,000 subscribers, and we just hit 9,000, which is insane. Also, as an added challenge, let's see if anyone can actually beat Night 4 Masters Collegiate. Anyways, thank you all for 9,000 subscribers again, and thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video.